Hello boys and girls. Here we are again. Now, <coughs> what we've got this time is a, a customer of mine who, uh, he's got an American pickup, a real low rider one. Um, it's one of them, it looks rusty but it's not, it's uh, patina effect I believe they call it. <coughs> uh, and he wants to put some new lights on the back and the lights are going to consist of a piston with a con rod in the back and that mounted in there. So what I've got to do is bore the middle of that out to whatever that light is. Seventy, well, 73 millimetres, measures. I'll bore it to 73 and a half, just to give us a little bit of play. Uh, I've only got 15 mil deep. I've had a look inside there, and when you put that conrod in, the top part here will hit the bottom of the light. He originally asked me to bore them 20 mil deep, but I don't think we're going to get that. I don't really want to start messing with the top of that. He can grind a bit off if, if he needs to turn it, you know, a little bit more than what it'll be. So we've got to bore them out, 15mm deep, 73.5mm wide. And then if you can see on the drawing that he gave me, he's got a similar CAD system to mine, i.e. shit. <coughs> My cup of tea, that is <coughs> uh, So, where this is going to be on the back of the pickup, I've got a machine, a piece of bar that's going to fit in there uh, as he's got there on his drawing. Look, 110 mil long. Uh, oh, I see. He's put a little flange on the end so that'll slide along the bar. So if that's his piece of bar, obviously going to be a lot bigger. Let's just slide it on to hit a flange on this side. Push up against there. Uh, what else have you got there? Two M8 holes. That must be just to mount it then. But I'll tell you what I'm just looking at is when that's on there, I wonder where he's going to take his wires, I suppose. He'll have to stick them under here somewhere and put, um, put them under the boss, won't he? I'm not going to uh, <coughs> I'm not going to try cleaning these pistons up because I think if it's two shiny pistons on the on the pickup, it wouldn't look very good. Uh, anyway, that's what we're going to do. So I'll get one of these in the lathe in the forge and see if I can get it uh, uh, dialed in, and then uh, we'll go from there. One other thing, if we can do this handout, in fact, I'll just move the camera. So there's the Bantam. She's uh, nothing wrong with it. It's uh, just wrapped up because I'm uh, going to be selling it shortly. There's the replacement. It's uh, Colchester Master. Uh, I've had it a few weeks. Uh, I haven't really done anything with it yet other than, uh, I can't see down there, but underneath that, there's six, six wheels on, six wheels, six levelling pads on this machine. And uh, I machined up some levelling pads for it. Uh, <coughs> what have I got with it? I've got a four jaw and a three jaw. Three jaw is not brilliant. Could really do with another one. Uh, I've got five tall holders. I'm used to 20, and all the others are up there. Look for the bantam. Uh, it's a bit longer bed. Uh, the other bantam was a one donkey horsepower. This is five donkeys, so it, it's uh, yeah, a bit of a difference. Uh, she's three phase, but I've got it on an inverter up there on the wall. And it runs quite nicely from that. Uh, what else can I say? Uh, ah, right. Metric machine. That's taken me a little bit of time getting my head around that, as to be honest. Even though when I was at school, I'm 51, uh, we didn't do Imperial, we did metric. But going, all the machining I've ever done uh, has all been Imperial. And now all of a sudden to change to metric, it. Uh, took a bit of head scratching <laughs> and it shouldn't do because once you get your head around it 
it is so much easier to use than uh, imperial measurements because you've got no fractions. Uh, I've seen the argument between people saying metric is more accurate than imperial. Well, it's a load of nonsense. Uh, a measurement's a measurement. The only difference is whether it's, well, it's the values, isn't it? But a measurement is the same no matter what units you use. There is no advantage uh, to imperial or metric as far as I'm aware. Uh, metric, like I say, I think it's easy to work out because you haven't got fractions. So, being that, that being said, sorry, this being a metric machine, I thought I would just be able to uh, use the thread dial down here and uh, thread just the same as I do on the Bantam. However, that's not the case. I don't know if I can get in there to show you. Let's slacken that off. Can you see that data plate? Get my arm out of the way. Come on, focus. Right, so inside that box there we've got one, two, three, four, there's five different uh, cogs, gears, should I say. And if you look back on the video at that data plate, what you have to do is for whatever in, uh, metric pitch you're cutting is to make sure you've got the right gear in that uh, thread dial gauge and then you use it just the same as you would if you was cutting imperial threads on an imperial machine. I couldn't get my head round why it wasn't working properly until a very nice chap from the model engineering forum called Andrew uh, dropped me a message and sent me a link to a website which explained it and basically what it comes down to is imperial threads are all divisible into one inch metric doesn't work like that uh, you'd have to read the article to get a good understanding but if you think about it you know 14 threads per inch 28 threads per inch 4 threads per inch it's all per inch well metric works differently uh, if I can get can I get you on there? See that data plate there? You can see there, metric pitch starts from point 0.2 up to 11. Oh no, up to 14. So there's a lot of different pitches in there and they're not all divisible into a certain length as such. Uh, no, that's not how you explain it. I think you understand what I mean. Uh, but that's took a little bit of getting my head around, but once I've got it sorted then uh, we're alright. Oh, another thing to say, this machine's got a taper attachment on it, which is quite a bonus. Uh, got a nice light up there, which is uh, doubling up, that's going to be a camera mount in a few minutes. Uh, that's basically it. Oh, I've got, got a big face plate down there, I think that's about 11, 12 inch. I've got uh, steady rest underneath that uh, bit of rag. Like I say, it's... Uh, it's 5 horsepower machine, I think at the moment it's, uh, I think it's a 13 inch swing, however it is a gap bend machine, you can take the gap out there and I think that takes it up to about 18 or 19, I think with something like, right we're, uh, we're zeroed up, I don't know how long we're going to be able to do this because for some reason my camera battery, I think, is kaput. Uh, I've got it on charge as I'm filming, but I have a feeling it's going to drop out any minute. Anyway, we'll see how we get on. Right, now it's flashing now, I think that's going to be curtains in a second. We'll see what happens. Poke hole through the middle first. Drill straight through because 
got to run a cable through there anyway. this by the way I forgot to say so the boat is continually running and then you just uh, drop it in and out as you need it. pressure on the threading handle on the lathe, it could actually stop the lead screw. Uh, I've got the book for it, have a look in the book and basically it's uh, just zero on the front. Basically what the book said was uh, on the end of the lead screw down here there is a shear pin is like a safety device in case you crash it so the pin breaks and it's a bit of a common problem apparently that uh, that pin gets broken but it sort of engages just a little bit so anyway I checked it that pin was fine uh, however it turns out on the bottom of the gear train at the back of the headstock there there is another one because when I was putting pressure on the threading handle on the on the carriage here because of the way the lead screw works and it nips both sides of the lead screw you know the half one that was actually stopping it from turning because the pin on the other end was broke so I think it was an 11mm pin by 3mm diameter I made another one and uh, bob your uncle panage your aunt and everything works alright eh? Right, 15 mil divided by 25.4. bigger drills boys I'm afraid so that's why <laughs> there's going to be a lot of boring on it. Right, we've got the feedback. I'll try to start with uh, 6 thou per rev. And we'll run. See what she goes like at 320.
Mill Mill out. Slow the feed down a bit more, I think. Some 
weighs 400 kilos, which is really just heavy enough. This is 840 or 860. Maximum RPM, 2,500. That's what the uh, old Chester Master 2,500 stands for. So we'll see next year how things go and how I get on with it. Uh, I'm going to have to make a load of tall holders though, that's the thing, I've only got the five, I need more than that. steel this is all I can tell you is it's really really good so I think we're going to take the middle down to 40 mil the ends 24 mil from the I'm going to face it off obviously and then come in 24 mil the OD of that wants to be 5685 that's the same ID as what's in the end of that Conrad but I think what we'll do we'll we'll machine it in uh, shit I might find the left-handed tool aren't I? and I'll rough it out first with the tool I've got in and I'll come back and I'll finish this end up and then we'll flip it round do the other end and drill a hole up through the middle to bring his cable through and then somewhere I've got to put two uh, M8s in the end which will do which will be what's used to screw it to the side of his pickup so we'll face this off and just clean the top off uh, I'll say we'll turn it to 5685 and I'll try and match it up from the other side how successful that will be, I'm not sure, but uh, we can only try, can't we? The tip doesn't look particularly good. Give it a go. Uh, we'll run at 320 and we'll see how we get on. Look at it, it's sparking already. Check half a mil, 20 pounds. So I've got to get used to this metric part. Right? I think we can say that tip's knackered. Just to rough it out, I'm not too bothered. I've cut the bit of steel five mil too long, so. I'll have a closer look at that tip in a minute. commonly known in the trade as shack. Right, I'll we'll swap it now.
Church. Not easy with this bloody camera in the way. Sixty point six one. That's three point seven six, I think. She'll be about half of it. And when I've got this past on, I'm going to let it cool down a bit before I get uh, my last one. Yeah, you've been asking. 